So can we start with that um, and let's have a look at the pound and perhaps the reason why it's been firming sure. against the euro in this case. But maybe you could tell us a bit about yeah, sure. why it's, it's stronger it's against everything. In general, I think I wanted to highlight the euro side of it because I think it's probably the, the neatest sort of expression of, of the view. I mean, I think, in, interestingly, you're just getting back to sort of technical say in Sterling. With all the bad news, I think it does show how important, as a, I'm going to sell my mouse field here as a technical analyst, yeah. to, to have this as a discipline because it cuts through a around all that noise and basically just goes in price wise have we done anything meaningful have we broken a trend or a range etc and until maybe two weeks ago we just hadn't in sterling you know we were still stuck in this sort of drudge range that we've been in really volatile but for the last year the key thing for us is sterling in trade weight terms broke out of that range a couple of weeks ago and um, it put in a base and finally said we've done a more meaningful move. What I think this means economically or in terms of uh, market wise is we ruled out n no deal. I think really or the no deal risk has gone down you know to almost absolutely virtually zero. It mm. doesn't say we're going to get specifically soft Brexit to some degree or how it plays out do we get an extension but I think what Sterling has done and says no deal pretty much the market's gone that's gone mm. uh, and so we think that's come clearly through across a whole range of currents currency pairs for sterling. I think the table I still think goes up as well. I think that, that, that will rise from here. We just like euro sterling as the more cleaner expression because then the, the dollar itself is a little bit more stuck in a range and challenged. So given that we've now broken through the upper end of that, mm. that range that we were sort of 127, 132 yes. or thereabouts and just ping, pong, ping, ping ponging backwards and forwards, um, where are the next key levels to the upside? For us, we think 136, 137 is, is the next key area to the upside. I mean, there are some levels in between, but really 136, 137. We actually think it's quite difficult to see it going significantly above there, uh, certainly above 140. I think that actually this is a, a good good result, but it's not the result that's, hey, hey, we're going back to 150 or 155 or anywhere close to that. If you look at the actual data in the economy, you know, the numbers are terrible. Mm -hmm. And I think that reflects itself in putting a cap on cable at 36, 37. Yeah. Probably euro sterling back around 84, 83 and a half, I think probably at the moment, is the extent of the move that we're going to see, but it's still a move that we can play for. Could um, an extension dent the momentum to that new higher level? It's an interesting one because you definitely have taken out of, if it's a short extension into June, you know, actually that brings a sharper cliff edge in, into mm. sort of the picture and so you can definitely take the view where actually it raises that risk again. So I think it depends on that time frame of the extension, but June, we were, there's certainly an argument can be made, actually that's a sharper cliff edge than, than the March sort of time. Mm. Uh, can I just get into FTSE? For, for me, yeah. because we had these unusual levels on the UK market mm. early last year, actually probably about the same time this year, the, you know, a year ago, seven seven hundred looking like we would breach seven eight hundred. In this time frame, there was a little bit of sterling strength, and one forty odd handle flashed up uh, in a window of time too. Is there any scenario where you see FTSE going back for some of those highs? I, I FTSE is getting pulled all, all over the place because I mean we clearly had a good boost from the weakening sterling, as, as, sort of sorry, strengthening sterling as we saw cable move up and US sterling come down, and that initially acted as that boost for it. And as soon as um, sorry, I'm, I'm getting wrong, it's weakening sterling helped the FTSE, and as soon as sterling starts to strengthen again, it's put a break on that rally. Clearly, FTSE is you know one of the most markets that's exposed to the global economy. So as, as long as the global economy continues to, to, to hold up, and we're seeing S and P's clearly push for 2800, I think that is the pull the other way that that will help in in the UK. Um, You've got the commodity, you've got the mining story, which has done very well with sort of oil and copper, especially having based out. And I think that's a positive. So I think there's too much two way pull on the UK. I think the main story is, is there a case to be made the UK outperforms in here in terms of the FTSE 100? And I just don't think there is. I think UK probably moves in line and there's too many competing forces on, on the actual market. David, let's, uh, let's move you on because we've got some other charts prepped for you. S&P 500, what's going on? Have we, have we broken the ranges? Not quite, but I think we're very close to it. I think probably, you know, we, we've had a target for the rally of 2800, 2015, which is where we've been to. And then we were looking for that to essentially then cap and to define the top end of a range rather than say, right, that's it. We're now doing this was just a bear market rally and off we go down again. It's more this caps for the top end of a range. And that's very much consistent with our house view for Credit Suisse, which is we turn as a house neutral on, on global equities literally about a week, week and a half ago. And it's very much in line with that. I think clearly, though, at the moment, there is a we've gone to 2800, 2850 and then just stopped. We haven't come off anywhere. In fact, we're now as a Friday trying to push through a bit. I think the ISM new orders was probably the last chance on Friday if we weren't going to come off sharply from there on that data that the risk is we may even push higher. I think what I find compelling is the background indicators on the market, the breadth, the volume, the, the general sentiment is all 
the breadth and volume is super strong. If you look at something like an advanced decline line, we're well above the 2018 highs already. I think the sentiment is still so negative for, for the US equity market and equities in general that I think the pain trade is actually still higher. So I think even though we've been looking for 28.15 to ideally cap and be the end of the top of the range, mm. I think there's a risk we may actually see 28.40, maybe 28.60 yet before we're done. I don't think it's a move at the moment. Technically, we chase to new highs. We still are looking for this top end of the range scenario, but it may not be. It's right here, right now. We've got a bit more to go yet. Mm. Uh, can we just get in the? Um, we can circle back and talk about some of these, but I want to make sure we cover off all your charts. The mm. Shanghai. Yeah, I mean, we can see it's just been a huge test for China. This, you know, as of you know, we got up to three thousand last week, and we're now trying to push through it today. If you just look at this weekly chart, hopefully of the Shanghai Comp, three thousand, three thousand forty is the big breakdown point from the big top from sixteen to eighteen. I mean, it's a huge resistance level. Um, I think there are positives things going for China. Um, I think if you look at Asia as a general sort of um, sort of space, it, it's good, it holds a base, and China was the thing that was holding it back to some degree, and I think mm. China having come through has helped that. I think you've got a good momentum story here in China as well. Um, and I think what clearly is, is strong is the fact that one, we gapped up you know, a week or so ago, but if we push through 3,000 really very easily, what should have been a major, major sort of, you know, pause for the market. I don't think any of the bull move at a pause. That has to be going on the constructive side. So clearly we're not quite through yet, but I think the, the balance of probabilities is technically is actually we probably will push through these levels and extend the rally. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.